Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. Talk back to me. Good to be seen. Yes. Well, welcome. My name is James Beatty. I'm one of the elders here. It's so good to see your faces. And even though it's raining outside, the sunshine the Lord and Jesus Christ is on the inside of us and inside of your smiling faces. Yes. Give me, you know you paid a lot. No, I'm sorry, I can't say that. I, I was, 
I was going to say, you know you paid a lot for them teeth, so you missed it. Uh, well, that's me. Forgive me for all who I've offended. I've gotten off on the wrong foot this morning. But we're family, right? Woo, they done kicked me out. Woo, I better change the sermon right, right now. No, but it's good to see you. It's good to laugh with you. Good to have fun with you. Um, and those of you joining us online, welcome. Welcome to another day with Jesus Christ. Greet someone to your left or your right just to say hello. Uh, see them in a new day. I want to read something for you um, in Psalms 13. It says, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord for he has been good to me. You know, when I read that, I, I sound kind of, or I feel like, you know, that special child. That favorite child. You know, I'm selfish like that. Well, then I heard the Spirit say, that's okay. Because everyone is my favorite child. I'm favorite because God gives me the things that I need. I'm favorite because... God is no respect to a person, so all the blessings I've seen happen in someone else's life, I can trust that he's going to bless me. So I'm favorite. And the good news for you, that means you are also favorite. So if you would stand to me as we go into our praise and worship, Because we're going to sing because God has been good to us. Amen? Let's sing to the God, to the Lord.
anybody have a testimony? Ooh. Can we listen to your testimony today? Do you have a testimony of God's faithfulness? When it came through and it shouldn't have happened But it came through like you promised Woo. I would love to hear your testimonies today. What about that, huh? How about taking these words and bringing them into the room with what is on your heart? Short, not long testimonies. <laughs> nice short little ones. I asked Matt if he would come up, and he has a mic, and he's going to find you. If you want to just give a shout out, a testimony of God's faithfulness, this is the time right now. And then I'm going to make you stand up again if you sit down. I just want you to know that. So go ahead and sit down, but you're going to come back up. <laughs> there you go. She's standing here, and she's, yes. Praise the Lord. thing is, uh, Natalia told me when um, I came in that I should give a testimony. So it's... Hold that mic up so we can hear you. Oh. There you go. Um, so we, I came to a prophetic prayer and worship on Tuesday, and um, the Lord gave Natalia a word, and it's been with me, and it's been part of my faith. And the word was, God hears me, God sees me, God loves me, he is with me. And I really needed that because I felt like I didn't deserve to be here. Um, there are people going through so many different things. And, you know, God has blessed me in so many areas of my life that I know that I felt like I didn't deserve to be worshiping among everyone who had so many different things going on. But God told me that no matter what, he hears me, he sees me, Amen. he loves me, and he is with me. Anyone else? I feel like those are truths that we can all, why don't we just say those together? God hears me. God sees me. God loves me. And what was the last one? And God is with me. Amen. We don't need much more than that. is just a testimony of how God really, um, how listening to God, maybe I shared this, I don't know, but how listening to God and trusting him, he always comes through and is always faithful. Um, last month I had a really big work project and at the beginning of May, God told me to just kind of center in, only listen to gospel music just really just focus in on just even listening to gospel music only exclusively I was like okay and I did that for a week and um, I did it for a week and on like the seventh or eighth day I was like oh I'm gonna listen to a little Stevie Wonder and I, <laughs> I listened to like half a song and it was like mm -mm, no no go back so anyway long story short I settled in and only listened to gospel music and then two weeks before my big work event and the day of my big work event, two tremendous things happened um, in my job that made me have to take on more responsibility than I was already carrying. And yet, 
I was centered and I was ready and I wasn't shaken. I was like, okay, God, this is why you had me focus in. This is why you had me center in. And I was able to float through that huge event with all of this weight that I really wasn't carrying because God had prepared me for it. And so that's just a, an encouragement for you. When you hear that little whisper of God telling you to do something, and you kind of don't know why, and even buck against it a little bit. Just trust God that he has you and that he's preparing you for something that you don't even know is coming. And yet you will be ready when it comes. And you will recognize that it was God who prepared you for that time. Amen. Okay, I don't have a lot to say. I just want to say the Lord is delivering me from depression, and I mean clinical depression. And if anybody wants to hear more, I'll talk to you personally, but I'm really thankful. Wow. Amen. <laughs> you got a mic. Got one. Um, yeah, I just lost and abandoned myself and he's just showing me how to like and love myself again he's awesome anyone else I have a testimony of how um, before church, a couple weeks ago, we decided as elders that we were going to pray together. And God has just been so faithful to meet us in that place. It's been a rich, beautiful time. And even for me, like seeing God speak in new ways again, um, it's been really powerful. And I'm just really thankful that we have that opportunity. So I fought God because I don't want to do the ugly cry. It might happen though, but um, can we just say that Cornerstone was at Pride yesterday? And, and it took us a long journey to get there. And I was blessed by so many people who showed up, both in the community and allies, and it was an amazing day. So I'm just so very glad, hi sweetie. <laughs> I'm so very glad. Um, that we're at this place and that we are welcoming and the conversations we had with people who are seeking and needing healing, it's very powerful. So thank you for everyone who showed up. Prepped, a lot of work. Thank you for Dawn. Um, and thank God that we are an inclusive church. Thank you. morning I was really fighting coming up here this morning but something just kept telling me I need to come up here mm -hmm. um, I remember when I first started coming to Cornerstone I felt like I had the world on my shoulders I couldn't carry anything I, I thought my altar that was my permanent spot when I had to come to church every Sunday because I just couldn't shoulder it all but through God's love and faithfulness that I learned here I was able to come through those dark places, those dark moments, and see another side of my life that I would have never been able to see without him and his love and the love and prayers of this community. So I just wanted to share that testimony. God, we are thankful for all that you have done 
all that you are doing and all that you will do. Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful to those who have gone before us. Lord, in our lives are filled with the testimonies of your faithfulness to us. Lord, help us to not forget. Help us to hold on to those testimonies, to remind us of your goodness, of who you are, how you love us, and how you will bring us through. Amen. You were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me, Jesus. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life.
There's no shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. Oh, you chase us down, Lord, you love us, God. There's no wall, you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming after me. Let's stand and sing this right now. Here we go together. There's no shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. Oh, how we love to. There's no wall, you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow. Isn't God's love good? We see it in our testimonies. We, we see it in his word. We see it all around us. Even as it's mixed with the brokenness, we see his goodness. And we hope and trust that his love will be all that's left. That there will be a day when sorrow and tears will be wiped away. When the pure love of God will remake all things and we will have a kingdom that lasts forever with him. It's a good hope that we have. My name is Matt Kistler. I'm one of the elders here. I wanna welcome each of you. I'm thankful for you being here. Thank you to Joni and the team for leading us in worship. And now, the next part of our 
time here together is our offerings. So I'll call forward our ushers. <laughs> David was saying he wasn't going to come. We know you'd come, David. We're thankful that we are able to meet here together. And it takes all of our resources shared to be able to do it. And so we encourage you, if you believe in, if you have been served by, if you feel called to share some of what you have with Cornerstone, we appreciate it so that we can keep this community reflecting who God is. There's a lot of different ways you can give through the mail, by text, in the basket, on the website. So I'll pray over our giving. Lord, we are thankful for all that you have provided us. Lord, you have given us more than enough. We thank you that there is not a scarcity in your kingdom. Lord, we bless and honor each person who can give today. And we thank you that through our generosity, you reveal yourself. That is part of your glory, is how you give away and how we can give away and share with one another. In your name we pray, amen. Now today is a special day. Last week we had the graduation, the blessing service over our seniors. And we kind of have the parallel today for Kingdom Kids where our fifth graders and the kids who are leaving Kingdom Kids and moving into youth group are able to share, are able to reflect on who God is in their lives and graduate to a new phase, and it's something we're really excited about. So we're going to call up Natalia and Rashida and all of the kids who are graduating today to come up here so that we can pray for you. morning everybody so as Matt explained we are children's ministry directors um, Natalia and I and our fifth graders are going to be moving up and going to youth so Mr. Matt and Miss Tassaday get to have some fun with them so but today we are going to make sure it keeps a little calm but next year we'll definitely incorporate that up here we're going to be in uh, kingdom kids and they're going to present and share God's love and what it means to them so it's a really really great time so when the kids are in there today they'll get to see that and it's such a blessing we've had them for how long um probably gonna cry today especially all these children as i've known forever um, but it's such a blessing to have them move up into this next stage and everything so that is what we'll be doing today thank you we really appreciate you giving the kids this opportunity um so let's pray for them maybe if everyone could just extend your hands toward the kids God, today as I was driving, uh, I saw the rain, and I just had this picture of your rain and your river. Lord, we thank you for your rain each day providing for us. We pray that you would rain down over these children, that they would have all that they need to know you, to follow you, to love you. Lord, and we pray. We, we also recognize that there's a river from generation to generation. You faithfully share who you are to each new generation. And we pray that as we as adults receive who you are, that we would be pouring it out into that river, into our youth, into our children, supporting them, blessing them, caring for them, showing them the way that they too might do the same. That their children and those children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren 
would come to know you and come to know the life that you offer. Lord, we are thankful for each one of them, for James, for Sophie, for Beth, and every other one, and Azila. Lord, we are thankful for your work in their lives and pray your blessing over all that they do. In your name we pray, amen. And we will now dismiss all of our children. Now, it's been a long time coming. I, I, I marked in my calendar months ago when I would get to MC when James was preaching. So it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I'd like to welcome up the articulate, the erudite, the well-read, well-bred, well-said, the Goliath of Green Hill, the one called bald but never stalled. He's a giant of justice, a man after God's own heart, the unshakable, unmistakable, unbreakable, unfakeable, the Reverend James Beatty. Give it up. Oh, it's on now. <laughs> You got me, Matt. Oh, it's game on. I think I'm going to take some MC assignments. <laughs> oh, I love the love. I love the love. Thank you. Thank you. It's good. Oh, now I'm thinking. Now we're going to do some things. Well, ah. Uh, it's good to be with you. It's good to see you. Um, it's good to have this time with you. Um, as most of you know, we're, we're in our, our, our sermon series focusing on center set and walking through John. Uh, just seeing what are the stories that John tells us about being focused on Jesus the Christ. And there are so many times when I get up to speak or, or we're doing some things when and you're developing a sermon or what you want to say and you're wondering, is that the way I should go today? Is that what we should talk about? And then God gives you these affirming moments that, yes, that is exactly what I want you to talk about today. So even before I start, I will say to you, we've already demonstrated in today's sermon the main point of the sermon. And that came during our first song in praise and worship when we talk about what is our testimony. What is our testimony that impacts the world around us, uh, other people's lives, and how they see things and how it gives them hope, how it changes how they engage life and how it changes their expectations of what should they exist in, what should they accept in this existence called life. So I'm going to talk to you for the next few moments, but if any time you doze off, get lost, if you just remember one thing, that I have a powerful testimony, you have gotten what you need. You've gotten what you need. And I'm going to try to present this to you in kind of a Bible story theater. So I'm going to need some help from you all in a, in a little bit. And, and we're going to talk through these pieces um, about John 12. We're actually going to start at verse 9 and go through 19. But even before I get to that, I want to remind you or, 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 or announce to some of you, I don't know if you know we have a YouTube page and Instagram. I ask that you sign up for those. In addition to our app, click on them, subscribe to those. That way you can catch our 
podcasts, our messages, the performances that have been done over time, uh, just to continue to refresh your soul, refresh your body, refresh your mind about some of the things and messages that we continue to put out into the community so that you can consume them at your leisure. So let's read, but I'll open up in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this moment in time, this opportunity to dive into your word, to try to search for the message that you are sharing with us in this day that we can apply to our lives. We ask that you give us a fresh understanding in everything that we do today and that we can carry it forward throughout the week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, um, John 12, starting at verse 9. I'll read, this is the NRSV version uh, that is, I think, on your screen, but feel free to follow along on your own Bibles and on your phones, and let's engage. When the great crowd of Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it wasn't on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. The next day, a great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and they went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one that comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when they called Lazarus out from the tomb and raised from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they had heard that he had performed this great sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him reading of the word. So this is a common set of scripture that you would hear on Palm Sunday, right? Uh, it's the preparation for that whole week of going into Easter. And it talks about all of the palm and circumstances that occurred on that day to affirm that Jesus was the Christ. Right? How Jesus enters, what's going on around him. This is all affirmation of Old Testament prophecy. That's what's happening in this text, and you've heard that part of the story many times. And so we won't go into that any further today, but it's a very foundational piece of our faith, and it's... Uh, something that you should have deeply rooted in who you are in terms of understanding this text in that day. But as I said, I, I want to talk about other messages that are also embedded in this scripture. It's what I love about the Bible that if you slow down, there's so many things to be gleaned from the word that we can apply to our lives each and every day. And so, I want to look at this in terms of other people, other characters that are also at this event and what may be going on in their life. And I want to do this kind of, as I said, through Bible story theater here for a moment. And so I need a Lazarus. Okay, come on, Lazarus. Let me get you a seat. Right here. Now, this one is always the hardest. Always the hardest. I need a chief priest, a Pharisee. Come on. 
Thank you. Thank you. Huh? I need you a seat too. You want to do the, grab a chair, grab the stool for it. Because this is a story about them as well, right? Lazarus is here. The crowd is here. Chief priests are here. And you hear a little bit, but not much, about their story, but there's a big story going on with them, right? Our friend Lazarus here, you know, we don't really know that much about Lazarus. We know that Lazarus was the brother of Mary and Martha. We know Lazarus is from Bethany. But what is it about Lazarus that the chief priests want Lazarus dead? What is this? You know, go ahead. Because Jesus raised them. Right? Well, why is that so powerful? You know, I, I even searched. I couldn't even find a word that my friend Lazarus has even said. Not one word. And people want to kill Lazarus. Right? So when we see this, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, about the man who was healed from blindness, and he was kicked out of the church, and I'm going, why are you kicking a blessed person out? Why are you wanting to kill a raised from the dead person out? Why do you want these stories and these testimonies gone? I think one of the reasons that I didn't get in the past that I'm starting to get an understanding of today is that the chief priests and Pharisees understood that Lazarus, the person, was a noun that has become a verb. Lazarus, the person, was once a noun that has now become a verb. You see, because when you read the story in John 12, it is because of Lazarus, in addition to Jesus, of why they come to Lazarus' house. It is to see the person who was once dead, now alive and breathing. It is because of Lazarus that even on Jesus' most triumphant journey into Jerusalem, they come to see Jesus, but they are coming for the story of Lazarus. Lazarus is now affecting people. Lazarus is now changing people. Lazarus has a story to tell that the chief priests and Pharisees want an end to. Right? So we have this situation, Lazarus minding his own business. You don't even know what his job is. You don't know if he's married. You don't know any of this. But Lazarus has become powerful. Lazarus has been affected by Jesus by being raised from the dead, but now is affecting others. A noun that became a verb. And if you look, uh, even in the use of those two words, affect with an E, affect or affect with an A, the difference is one is a noun and the other is a verb. And there's a great power in the difference between the two, even though the difference in the words seems subtle. And I will submit to you that an engagement with Jesus Christ may seem subtle to you that has had an extraordinary impact, an extraordinary impact and change in your life, right? And just to tease out that difference in effect and affect a little bit more, I, did any of you grow up in the age of Schoolhouse Rock? Oh, that's an affirmation. Of those of you on the line, if you haven't, look it up on YouTube. It's wonderful. There are certain, what were your favorites? 
Conjunction Junction, yes. Huh? I'm just a bill. What? Three's a magic number. Man and a woman had a little baby. Yes, they did. <laughs> what are the others? We the people. How a bill becomes a law. I think I passed government because of Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> right? In these, we talk about, or in these uh, school videos, cartoons, they also talk about the difference in a noun versus a verb. A noun, they tell us, is a person, place, or thing. But a noun is actually stagnant. It is just this thing. And it tells you that a verb is where the action is. Verb has power. A verb changes things. According to Schoolhouse Rock, a verb can take a noun and bend it. A verb sometimes doesn't know its own power. That's what a verb is, according to Schoolhouse Rock. So in like manner, Lazarus, who once was a noun that has become a verb, doesn't understand his own power. And I would submit our friends, the scribes, Pharisees, chiefs, priests, knew that. Because even today, there is a thing called the Lazarus effect. Have you all heard about it? In the medical field, there is a condition that people who have died, cardiac activity has ceased. They've performed CPR. They've done all the things that they know to revive a body. And none of those work. And then the body has been claimed dead. They walk away and the body auto-resuscitates. After all of these years, the story of my friend Lazarus still lives. And they understood this power. They understood that this miraculous miracle, it wasn't temporary, it wasn't stagnant, it was going to go on and on and on. And if we don't put an end to it, it's going to be destructive to us. The illustration I'll give you is this. Rub your hands together. Then stop and place it on your cheek. How did that feel? What happened? Warm. Warm. Heat. I'm sorry? <laughs> Warmth, heat. But no real damage to your hands, right? It warmed up for a little bit. That can actually be positive. And if it was just the miracle of Lazarus, it would be a temporary thing. We'd get over it. Life returns to normal. Life goes on. But what would happen if you did this all day? Hands would get really, really hot. Really, really hot. Chafing. <laughs> damage. Damage. They were concerned about the damage Lazarus was about to do. This was what's happening. They understood. They could see, right? We, at times, addressed the, the chief priests as if uh, uh, they were not wise, that they were not thinking. They were just arrogant. But no, they had purpose. And the reason I want to point that out is because at some time, we sit in this seat, and we don't even recognize. This is what we're doing. But continuing on, because we talked about testimonies, and these testimonies are multiple people. So even, so it wasn't just Lazarus who was creating this problem, it was the blind man. Right? Back in about chapter 9, the disciples and Jesus were just walking, and this blind man cries out, Jesus, heal me. The man is healed. His neighbors who knew him as a beggar came to him and said, what happened? Tell us. 
It is your eyes that have been opened. What do you say? And when their response back was, I know one thing. I once was blind, and now I see. This was not a great oratory. This was not Paul giving a speech. This was not Barnabas. Or even the Samaritan woman found at the well. She went back to her community, and she said, come, see a man that has told me all about myself. And the Bible then says, because of her testimony, Many believed. What I was overlooking is the fact that the chief priests and Pharisees did not care that Lazarus was raised from the dead. What they cared about is Lazarus would convince others they could live too. They did not care that the blind man could now see. They were concerned that he would convince others they should live a life seen too. They did not care about the Samaritan woman. They cared that she would convince other women and other people that were cast out. There was somebody who wanted them in. A testimony that was amplifying the mission and the message of Jesus Christ. And the message and the testimony didn't have to be an elaborate thing. As I said, we can't find a word Lazarus said. Lazarus was a common man. But yet, he had enough power that people wanted to kill him. The blind man in John is nameless. And yet, he needed to be kicked out. The Samaritan woman was ashamed of the life she had lived, but yet changed the whole community. Do you see yourself yet? Do you see that after you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, you are affected? Your situation has changed, but that's not the end of the story. You start affecting others. I think at times we look at the miracles in the, in the, the stories within the Bible. You guys can go if you're getting uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> to give them a hand. As if their story is over. And I submit to you, it's just begun. That as we continue to do the things that are profitable and prosperous in our own lives, doing the things that are natural to us, other people start gaining hope. Other people start thinking, wait a minute, could this be true? When people start asking the question of, about spiritual matters and they start searching any and everywhere. Maybe they go on YouTube. Maybe they just start searching the internet. It's like, what can help me in my life? What can solve the issues of my day? And they hear a lot of things. So now they have the problem of what is true, what's right, what's real. And then they see people like you. And they start asking themselves the question. There's some things in your life that seem to be working. Can you tell me about them? I like the way your family kind of gets along with each other. How did that happen? I like that you seem to have a joyous spirit just when you come into the room. What's that about? You seem to be even killed when the chaos is all around. What's driving that? I think we take these small things, these small miracles in today's tumultuous time as nothing, but others are searching for just that. Or is there any of that that you think is touched by God? Is there any thing in terms of your health that you think was granted to you by God? 
Do you need the miracle of being raised from the dead in order to you to be? I thank you for my body. I thank you I can move my arms. Or will it have to be not until you are in a hospital pronounced dead that now you understand life? Could it be that you don't need to be the person at the well that has been dumped on for you to understand what it's like to be embraced and loved? That is a miracle in today's time. That is a miracle. It is interesting that it is the religious people who are yelling out when Jesus is coming into the city. Hosanna, Lord of the, high, of the Most High. Hosanna in Hebrew is save us, we beseech you. Why would religious people say save us? What do they need to be saved from? Right? I present to you for your own thought that the people are tired and want to be saved from a religious belief that has all kinds of requirements on them but give them no tools to execute. They want to be saved from a religious belief that tells them to be ashamed and does little to uplift them. Save us from a belief that does not impact my life. Hosanna, Lord God of the Most High. Save us, Jesus, the Christ, from the things that we are experiencing right now. Does any of your neighbors seem to be shouting Hosanna in their own way? Do you see it? And do you see how your testimony can help them to move through it in your job, in your neighborhood? Or those around you seem to be suffering and pain and can't seem to get it to the other end. And our issue is we think we need to be perfect in order to testify about the things that God has already done for us. You know, I don't have the testimony of some of you, but I have a testimony. And if we collect all of our testimonies together, think of the hope that we could create for others. Because your testimony is different from mine, different from hers, different from his, and it is meant for all of us to work in unison in the community to say that there is this person called Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, connected to God, not only for eternity, but also here on this earth. Will you share your testimony? Do you have that courage so that when people uh, approach you in the streets, you will just be you? Stop faking being church people. Y'all don't even like it. You don't even like it. You, I mean, come on. You don't want to dress like they used to tell us how to dress. There's no way I could used to could wear jeans in church. There was no way. She was talking about Stevie Wonder. Oh, God. <laughs> Not where I grew up. Y'all know y'all don't like that stuff. So why you keep fronting? God sees everything. Why are you hiding from us? If you really believe that, why are you only hiding it from people? Just saying, I'm sorry, tangent. Your testimony is the story. We, a couple of weeks ago, we ordained Miss Cindy, and a lot of people came to support her, and they all had stories on the effect that, that Miss Cindy had had on their life. 
And if you know Miss Cindy, you know she doesn't go out like a traditional minister. <laughs> Why? Well, what do they love about her? That she's real. And if you have people driving from New York to be with you on a Sunday morning in service just to say, I love you, you know you've had an effect on their life. That is what we are about. I ask that each and every one of you embrace the person who you are to live the life that has been given to you, the miracle that you are, the Christ that is in you, the miracles that you will encourage the world with. You don't need to be perfect. You just need to be real. Tell your story. And at that point, and at that point, we can impact the world. That's all Jesus asked of us. There was a song that we used to sing when I was growing up. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. I ask that you do that today. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your call to your people. Because first, we thank you for the blessings that you've already given us. Sound mind, a healthy body, a will to serve you. We thank you for the blessings that you've already given us in our family, education, employment, all those things that we would consider monotonous because in them, we can influence those around us. Be with us. Give us the opportunity and the courage to speak your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask for that service to come for the communion. Sean, if you'll come up. Did you get anything out of the message? Thanks. Yes. So as we prepare for communion, I ask that you reflect on the goodness of Jesus. And I want to do the communion this way. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said to them, Eat. Eat all of it. Because the times that you do this, you're remembering my body that is broken for you. And the reason that is significant, because in other scriptures it says, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. So as we live this physical life here on earth, there is a promise of a blessing from Jesus that our body is meant to be healed. It's meant to be whole. It's meant to be functional. And after the meal was done, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, drink, drink all of it. This is my blood, which is shed for you. And in the blood, it is a mark of the sacrifice leading to salvation and reconnection with God in heaven. So as we eat and as we drink, I want you to reflect that we are declaring Christ's life, death, and resurrection 
but also that we are healed both physically and spiritually connected to God. Come, partake, in Jesus' name. We say yes. We say yes to the fact that we don't need to be perfect and we just need to be real. 
us carry that this week. Yes, God, we accept your love. We accept that we can be real to one another. We can share our story with one another to bring change and transformation in this world. I just have a few announcements as we close out the service this morning. First, there's um, a Kingdom Kids fundraiser today, actually, out in um, Honey Grow, Honey Grow Restaurant in Exton. So it, it's open all day until I think nine o'clock tonight. So you can go there for lunch after service. You can hop over there for dinner. But they're donating 20% of all proceeds for this specific Kingdom Kids ministry fundraiser today. So if you order online, there is like a code you have to put on. So if you're going there for pickup or delivery, use the code. If you're going in person, just say here for the Kingdom Kids fundraiser, and they will make sure that counts towards the donation. We are also having a bonfire and s'mores gathering this Friday at 630 at my house. So this is a great chance to just gather together, to hang out, have fun. If you want to invite friends, neighbors, coworkers, family, whoever, just come out. We've got a big yard. We're going to have some yard games. I may or may not be making some flavored marshmallows to enjoy. So there's that. If you need the address, just see me or my husband, Brandon, or email adminccf at gmail.com, and I'll get you that address. Um, there's a ton of other things going on coming up. There's a congregational meeting. There's um, VBS evening camp coming up. So I would just say, please check out the website, check out the app, stay connected. And I believe underneath some of these seats, there's still those cards that has some of our upcoming events. So grab that, take it with you, put it on your fridge and uh, have a great, great week. And Pastor James is going to close us out. If you would stand with God, I thank you for your people. And I ask that your blessings and guide rest, rule, and abide in each and every step that they take throughout this week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Go and be blessed. Have a great week.